I'm Haley Hepworth, and this is your BNB Coronavirus Report for Tuesday, May 5th. And today is the 37th day of school we have missed since we began following the stay at home order. Yesterday in Rochester, Governor Cuomo spoke about the things that schools were going to need to do in the fall to be able to reopen in September. Uh, part of the issue for our school was just the, the gatherings in the school. You have 25 students in a class. How do you put 25 students in a class and they're six feet apart? Uh, you need for 20 people, you need, you know, a tremendous size room. How, how would you do that in a school? How do you socially distance uh, students? Do you need more classrooms, which means they need more teachers? How do you serve lunch? What do you do about the bus? How do you keep fewer students on the bus? So those kinds of details have to be in the reopening plan. They'll get guidance on that. But it's going to be easier said than done, especially for a school. Because think about it. The problem is the gathering. A school is a gathering. That's what it is. Closer to home, BME News Director Casey Farr caught up with Superintendent Mr. DiTomaso and Assistant Superintendent Mr. Harrington to talk about what the district has planned for the fall. We will be prepared for whatever comes our way either an opening in September, a regular opening, uh, a combination of a regular opening and an online opening, um, an online opening, whatever it is, we're just planning for a bunch of different scenarios that may or may not happen. There's just so much we don't know at this point as we sit here on May 4th. And now that we know that we, we do have a, a number of, of, of circumstances that we could encounter in the fall. It's, it's utilizing our resources and sort of evaluating what's gone really well with remote distance learning and what needs improvement and more structure. Um, and uh, looking at that whole picture, I mean, we'll wait to see what the parameters are that are given to school districts and how to, how to open, but we'll be prepared no matter what. B&B will have more throughout the week from Casey's interview with Mr. DiTomaso and Mr. Harrington about plans for the end of the year, the district's thoughts about graduation, and more so, be sure to tune in to the Daily Report every day to get the latest. Now to see what is happening in your neighborhoods, let's check in with our B&B reporters from around the district. I'm Lori Lacroce and I'm reporting from my house on Onward Place in South Belmore. I know my family and I are very disappointed that schools are closed. I am a senior and missing the last few months of school before college is pretty rough. All the seniors are missing their lives for everything. But the only positive is that the weather has been getting very nice. But this, ha this may lead to another spike in the coronavirus since more people are going out and interacting with each other. We all need to stick to distancing ourselves for as a little bit longer so we could get so we could at least get our last summer. From reporting for BNB, I'm Laura Dale Croce. Hello, I'm Spencer Mattis, reporting once again from Legion Street. As you are all likely aware by now, Governor Cuomo announced the cancellation of schools within New York. This is an unfortunate revelation, albeit not an unexpected one for me at least. I had been anticipating that school would be shut down for the remainder of the year for a while now based on the trajectory of this pandemic. However, that doesn't make it any easier to deal with. It's still not a fun reality to realize that we're not going to be able to go to school and see all of our friends in person one last time before we head off to college. It's definitely not a fun reality. But in terms of what we're doing here with remote learning, week eight of remote learning, and I'd say that the main difference between here and then is it's definitely been streamlined a lot more. Teachers are definitely more efficient and more accustomed to the remote learning process. We're able to get work much faster. It's much more efficient. Besides that, fundamentally, it's remained the same throughout this entire quarantine process. However, the downside to this quarantine is the weather is getting a lot nicer but it's not going to be as easy to experience it because of social distancing. We're not allowed to experience the beauty of nature in traditional venues or in traditional ways at the moment because we have to remain vigilant in the face of this pandemic. 
hopefully as the summer progresses, restrictions will be lifted and it will be safe to travel. However, as long as it's not safe for people to be close by, we're just going to have to deal with the quarantine and make sure that everybody's safe. For BMB, I'm Spencer Mattis. Stay safe, everyone. Hi, I'm Eden Carroll, reporting from Gildersleeve Leaf Street, and it's week eight of this shutdown. Last week, Governor Cuomo announced the closure of all schools for the rest of the year. I'm really upset to hear that, you know, as a senior, it just sucks because now my senior year is officially over. I'm not going to have another day at Mepham ever again. Probably not going to see a lot of the people I knew in high school ever again. Really, it really sucks. Even though it sucks, I really do think it is the right decision to make, but it really doesn't make it any less upsetting. Anyway, for me, remote learning really hasn't changed at much since school is closed, other than the fact that I seem to be getting a little bit more work, but that's really about it. I think the warmer weather will definitely make social distancing harder for some people, as they may want to go out and interact, but I personally have no opinion on how... I personally really think that it won't affect me as much because I've really been mainly staying at home and I really think that's just how it's going to stay for now. And I don't see any changes coming soon. So, for BNB, I'm meeting Carolyn. Thanks, guys. Now, BNB's Michelle Spiller takes a look at how people around the district are supporting local businesses in this time of need. The coronavirus pandemic has impacted many aspects of our daily lives, ranging from education to the economy to socializing. But many local businesses have been struggling to scrape through these hard times, which makes it even more important to support local businesses. Small businesses, I think that we should be supporting them as much as we can because they're going to be the ones struggling to start back up after the whole crisis is over. So anything we can do to buy from them rather than big corporations who have a ton of money already, I think is really helpful. COVID-19 has ravaged through the economy as well as all the workers who help to support the economy. I know just this past week, 30 million people have filed for unemployment in the past six weeks, which is a record high. Like even during the 08 recession, it had hit, I think, two or three million. Um, so 30 million, it's unprecedented. And especially in, in our country where like 64% of the workforce lives paycheck to paycheck, it's really, really sad. I know it's already had effects. I was talking, both my parents are teachers, so I was talking to them earlier this morning about it. Um, how like pensions and retirement money are taking a huge hit because of this. Some who may even want to support their local businesses may not be financially able to during these troubling times. No one, even like, unless like you're crazy rich, like is in the spending mode right now. People aren't spending a bunch of money because the future of most jobs is like really uncertain. Nobody has any idea when they're going to go back to work, etc. Money may be tight for small businesses, but in order to help them stay afloat, it is very important to continue supporting them through this pandemic. I think that it's really important right now that we're supporting small businesses, not necessarily, like, especially more than big corporations. So I know what I've been trying to do is order, like, if you're ordering a product, if you can order it, like, a mask or gloves or anything like that, if you can order it from a smaller business or from a rather than Amazon or another really big corporation. I think that's really important right now. The economy may be struggling due to this pandemic, but helping out local businesses can only do good. From BNB, I'm Michelle Spiller. Thanks, Michelle. So that will do it for another episode of the BNB Daily Report. Be sure to tune in to BNB Friday night for game night two. Don't miss a minute of the action and the fun when Luke and Ava return along with contestants representing each building in the district. Be sure to subscribe to BNB to get the latest on all that is going on around the district during this typical time. To the members of our community and of our family who are struggling today, know you're not alone. And for BNB, I'm Allie Hepworth.